welcome back now it is time to discuss the next contribution to partition function and that is electronic i have been repeatedly telling that in the key in the order of energies you have the translational rotational vibrational electron and as we discussed in the previous lecture the vibrational contribution expected at normal temperature is generally not different than 1 and therefore it is also expected because electronic energy levels are far separated and therefore we expect in this case also the value of electronic partition function not to be very much different than 1 however in this case the degeneracy of the ground state will play a role whether the value will be 1 or equal to degeneracy of the ground state so therefore let us get started in discussing the electronic partition function the electronic contribution can be obtained directly by summation we don't need any approximation what is the reason because electronic energy separations from ground state are usually very large so if the separations are very large you require exceptionally high temperatures if the transitions are to be brought about by temperature so that means in general you don't need to derive any formula here one can simply expand this qe is equal to g0 plus g1 exponential minus beta e1 plus g2 exponential minus beta e2 plus so on we expand but as commented over here that the electronic energy separation from the ground state are usually very large if these are very large that means this value is very high and exponential of very high value with a negative sign is going to be close to zero so that means in that case all these upper numbers will be close to zero and electronic contribution is going to be equal to degeneracy of the ground state and if degeneracy is 1 then electronic contribution is usually 1 except look at the comment except in the case of atoms or molecules having electronically degenerate ground state that is what i was saying that if there is a ground state degeneracy then the value is going to be g0 very easy there are no complicated conversions into some approximation you simply expand this and depending upon the values of the first excited state usually the first excited state itself is very high therefore in that case you will generally have a value of g0 but in some cases there may be some lower lying first excited state so in that case where there is a lower lying first electronically excited state one can generally go up to the first the second term first is the ground state and second is g1 into exponential minus beta e1 let us discuss that with the help of an example as written over here some atoms and molecules have low lying electronically excited states one such example is nitric oxide no and i'm sure all of you know the electronic configuration according to the molecular orbitals here you see a comparison of mo's of n2 versus no both are diatomic linear molecules the electronic configuration in the mo of n2 you see here in 2s you have 2 in 1 sigma g 2 in the upper level anti bonding and here 4 in the 
bonding pi orbital two here and the anti bondings are not there and on the right hand side we see that for no i am putting here intentionally two different notations because if you follow some book they will follow this kind of nomenclatures of various mo's and another book may follow this kind of nomenclature for the mo's so therefore i am retaining both one major difference which you note between these two mo's for nitrogen you see these atoms energies are represented at the same level because both are it's a homonuclear diatomic molecule however when it is a heteronuclear diatomic molecules then oxygen being more electronegative you see the oxygen energy is lower than nitrogen energy oxygen has 8 electrons 2 in 1s 2 in 2s and 4 in 2p oxygen is paramagnetic nitrogen 7 2 in 1s 2 in 2s 4 and 3 in 2p unpaired and when you fill what you see is the difference between n2 and no is there is no electron here and there is one electron in the pi star 2px orbital in the pi orbital so that is what the configuration is pi 1 no okay the idea was here to show how the electronic configuration differs for no from n2 and eventually the configuration of no is all these you keep on filling and finally it is pi 1 and as i said that no is a system which has low lying electronically excited state now see what happens now that pi 1 electron is there so therefore what happens due to that the orbital angular momentum may to may take two orientations you can note over here with respect to molecular axis one will correspond to clockwise circulation and the second will correspond to anti clockwise circulation around the axis so one is clockwise the other is anti clockwise so therefore that leads to when you compare this see you talk about orbital angular momentum so therefore similarly when you talk about spin spin angular momentum here also you can talk about clockwise and anti clockwise there are two orientations in each case with respect to the molecular axis that means there are there is going to be total in all four states the one which is corresponding to spin momenta parallel or angular momentum parallel that is 2 pi 3 by 2 will not go into details of this nomenclature at this point the other one with 2 pi 1 by 2 with anti parallel momenta r the lower one so parallel versus anti parallel so total there are four you can see you have doubly degenerate here and you have doubly degenerate here and these are low lying the upper state is low lying and therefore at normal temperature you have all the four states accessible if all these four states are accessible then what will be the expression for partition function don't worry about this figure this is essentially the same figure which is shown over here somehow it got little different in the pre in the next one so you have two and you have two and this is separated by some energy which is 121.1 cm inverse so this is general form that we discussed earlier 
the ground state is W diesel rate. You have a value of 2. The first excited state is also W diesel rate 2 into exponential minus beta E and that E is equal to 121.1 centimeter inverse in this case. So, now depending upon the temperature because see here this one if I write over here this is 2 plus 2 into exponential minus E over k t. So, therefore, both the numbers will matter. Which numbers? The energy separation and the temperature both will matter and one can discuss when the temperature approaches 0 what will be the value when the temperature approaches infinity what will be the value. Generally, we have discussed as the temperature increases more and more thermally accessible states are there and therefore, the value of partition function will increase that is a general thumb rule. Let us see what happens. We just discussed this that in case of NO the electronic contribution to partition function will be 2 plus 2 into exponential minus beta e. And if you plot this Q e against temperature you expect a value of a total of 4 actually y 4 we are plotting q e against k t by e. So, therefore, when the temperature is close to 0 in that case. So, you have q e let us make it more clearer is equal to 2 plus 2 exponential minus e upon k t. As temperature approaches 0, exponential minus e over k t approaches infinity and exponential minus infinity is 0 that means q will approach a value of 2 as the temperature approaches 0 and that is what you see over here. And now when the temperature is increasing you can notice here this is an expanded form of this lower temperature region. This is how the value of partition function will start increasing and as the temperature is approaching very high the value is moving towards a saturation that is towards 4 because when the temperature is infinity when the temperature is infinity then 1 over infinity is 0. So, this will be 1 that means eventually you should get a value of 4 if the temperature is extremely high and that is what is commented over here when t is equal to 0 or t approaches 0 q e is equal to 2 or q e approaches a value of 2 and when t is very large q e approaches a value of 4 and at 25 degree centigrade you can put appropriate number that is 290. 8 Kelvin and you already have uh, an energy value of 121.1 centimeter inverse. Once you use this 121.1 centimeter inverse and a T value of 298 you will get Q electronic is 2.8. This is the scenario in the cases the molecule having low lying electronic state upper state. But even in that case you see the contribution at 25 degree centigrade is not very large it is simply 2.8. So, therefore, as a general rule let us conclude this discussion now I have Q defined by this general formula and the expansion of this is q e is equal to g 0 plus g 1 exponential minus e 1 upon k t 
प्लस जी टू एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस ई टू अपॉन के टी प्लस देर कैन बी अदर टर्म्स देर फोर एज आई डिस्कस्ड इन द बिगिनिंग यूजली द एनर्जी सेपरेशन इन केस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक लेवल्स वेरी लार्ज इफ दैट इज वेरी लार्ज इन जनरल यू विल हैव क्यू ई इक्वल टू जी जीरो एक्सेप्शन कैन बी देयर लाइक वी टुक जस्ट एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एनो वेर देर इज ए लो लाइंग अपर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्टेट इन दैट केस दिस कुड बी एक्सटेंडेड अप टू दिस इन जनरल दीज अपर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन विल नॉट बी देयर बिकॉज दोज एनर्जी लेवल्स आर फार सेपरेटेड एंड देयर फॉर दैट ऑक्यूपेशन is usually very low so therefore again as a thumb rule the electronic contribution to partition function will be usually close to the degeneracy of the ground state and in certain cases this can be including the degeneracy of the first excited state weighted by the exponential factor which involves the energy and the overall value therefore will be decided both by the energy separation and the temperature so by now we have discussed most of the contributions that we need to consider a system a molecule can have translational contribution rotational contribution vibrational contribution and now we have discussed electronic contributions if you can think of some other energy level then those contributions can also be come but if those energy levels are far 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 separated the contribution is usually going to be one the overall molecular partition function is going to be the product of all contributions that is the overall partition function will be equal to translational partition function into rotational partition function into vibrational partition function into electronic partition function in all these the vibrational partition function can have also contributions due to different normal modes of vibration so therefore partition function which is multiplication of all individual contributions will have maximum contribution from translational followed by rotational followed by vibrational and electronic both these vibration and, and electronic are going to be close to one so we are now equipped with the knowledge of molecular partition function how to calculate how to evaluate molecular partition function and what it needs is temperature and the respective energy levels information and where from that information will come will come from the respective spectroscopy microwave spectroscopy infrared spectroscopy electronic spectroscopy so once we have the information about the molecular partition function we have already discussed the connection between the canonical partition function and molecular partition function and as i discussed earlier that in this lecture series we are mostly concentrating on canonical partition function so once we have that connection between the canonical partition function and molecular partition function then we are ready to connect these further with different thermodynamic quantities the thermodynamic quantities like entropy enthalpy gibbs free energy helmholtz free energy and our main aim is eventually 
to further connect with equilibrium constant. So, what are the different thermodynamic signatures that we need to know? As I just said, when you talk about first law of thermodynamics, its internal energy du is equal to dq plus dw. Internal energy can be connected with partition function, whether molecular partition function or canonical partition function. Second law entropy S is equal to k log w and S also we have connected with molecular partition function or canonical partition function through u and other terms. Then the third law also deals with entropy. After that the Helmholtz free energy which is a maximum work function that is also connected with the partition function. Gibbs free energy, the change in which is a measure of maximum non pressure volume work that can also be connected with partition function, right. So, G is connected to H and S. So, if you know G, if we know S, we have information about H that is also connected with partition function. Once you know G, you can talk about delta G. You can talk about delta G naught in uh, chemical thermodynamics. I am sure that you understood the difference between delta G and delta G naught. You can connect both with partition function. And with the time in the lectures ahead, we are going to connect delta G naught, which is connected with equilibrium constant, and that we will further connect with the partition function. So, therefore, now with the knowledge gathered on all contributions, we will start further connecting these with different thermodynamic signatures and then discuss their applications. We will, do, we will discuss all these issues in the upcoming lectures. Thank you very much.